Madame Christine, the television programme on Santa Cruz just started. Oh, oh, all right, Bill, I'll be with you in a minute. Of course, the region needs more aid, but it's also important that the resources already available should be used more effectively. At present, they're often neglected for political reasons, and for some time... Have I missed anything? Economic Nothing much. In this part of the world have been getting worse. One of the poorest countries in the region is Tanaku, and it's appropriate that this year's regional development conference took place in the capital, Tanaku City. The chairman of the conference, Dr. Azevedo, had a dramatic announcement to make. The National Development Agency of Tanaku is going to start a major new project which has the full support of our government and the president himself. It will bring prosperity to the whole country, but especially to the southern region. The southern region of Tanaku is dry, with little cultivation. However, a short time ago, the National Development Agency discovered that the sand of one beach in the south is almost pure quartz, suitable for processing into silicon. The NDA has decided not to sell the sand, but to develop its own silicon processing plant near the beach with a factory to manufacture solar energy panels using silicon wafers. The chief development officer, Manuel Silva, gave the conference further details of the NDA's plans. We expect that several international companies will submit tenders, but we will require them to cooperate with local construction firms here in Tanaku. We will use local firms as much as possible. But can a country like Tanaku control the project when the finance has to be raised internationally? Of course we need finance, training and know-how from abroad. So we are going to ask our friends from overseas to be our partners. But we will repay our debts in full from the profits we make. Then the people of Tanaku will own the factories and plants themselves. Dr. Azevedo was optimistic, but other people at the conference saw difficulties ahead. As I understand from your outline, Mr. Chairman, Tanaku will need only one third of its silicon for the manufacture of solar panels. That is correct. However, we hope to extend the factory in the next 10 years or so. Yes, but during that time, can you be sure of a market? Well, what's your answer to that? There's no problem. According to our consultants, manufacturers in other countries will need large quantities of high-grade silicon. In view of this worldwide demand, we have no worries about the market. <laughs> It's a very big project, Andros. Some people think it's too big for the National Development Agency to handle. There are too many risks. What do you say? <sighs> if Tanaku produces its own silicon, it can make solar panels. But it will also have to sell 12,000 tons of silicon every year for several years. How can you be sure of a market? Mm. Mm -hmm. Are other silicon manufacturers going to stand aside and allow Tanaku into the market? Surely they will increase their own output to meet the new demand. Don't you agree? You do agree? Oh. Another thing. Why is the government going to develop the south? Why don't they choose the north? Your part of the country. I will tell you my opinion about the Silicon Project, Mr. Ferguson. For some time now, our president has been influenced by politicians from the South. This project will be too big for our country. We are biting off more than we can chew. More you can chew? Yes, yes. How do we know that we can sell all that Silicon? Tell me that. Yeah, very good point. 
So why not sell the court sand to Pansip? What it is. Why not sell the court sand to Pansip? Yes. Yes, that's excellent. Let Pansil buy the quartz and take the risks. And let them take all the risks. What a wonderful idea. Will you speak to the president about it? Yes. I'll speak to him tomorrow. Huff. Yes. It's a question of making the right choice. Ah, thank you. Do you think that many firms are going to bid for this project? I don't know. Frankly, I think Pansel has an advantage over the rest. Oh, why? Well, because it's a very big, big group. We can make a turnkey bid for the whole project. And that's what I think they're going to do. But my uncle has said he will also consider package bids for various parts of the project. I know, but a turnkey bid is more attractive for the customer. Then you deal with one company, and that company deals with the problems of its partners. Ramilla, there's a car coming. It's your uncle. Uncle? He didn't tell me. Well, he didn't tell me either. Why, hello. What a pleasant surprise. I must talk to James Clark before he goes back to London. He's on the terrace. Try to reassure the president. I told him there is no cause for alarm, but he's very worried. He says we must find an answer to Andros. Who is this man, Andros? Ah, he's a politician. He has a big following in the north. The president can't ignore Andros. The man is too powerful. But why does he want to stop the project? Because it will develop the south, not the north. So he says that Tanaku will not be able to sell its extra silica. I wonder where he got that idea. Well, I'm sure it's not true. The other silicon manufacturers can't keep Tanaku out of the market. Ah, uh -huh. but that's just what Pansil will do, according to Andros. Why should they do that? Because they want to buy the sand and convert it into silicon themselves. They don't want us to have our own silicon plant. Can they keep Tanaku out of the market? Well, it's possible. Anyway, Andres will say they can, on every possible occasion. He will cause trouble. We are depending on international banks for aid. And bankers are cautious people. If they think our government is divided, they will refuse to help. But then what will happen? We'll have to forget about our own project. We'll just have to sell the court sand to Pansel. Which is what they've always wanted. No. We must go ahead with our project. But what can we do? It's quite simple. You must find a bidder who will guarantee a market for the extra silicon. That's the answer to Andros. Does such a company exist? Well, no, apart from Pansil. They're big enough to provide their own market. They have companies in the group which manufacture many silicon-based products. Well, it seems to me that Pansil, with the help of Andros, are forcing us to do exactly what they want. Do it seem so? Ramilla's right, though. We must find a bidder who will guarantee a market for the extra silicon. I've already told you there aren't any other groups that big. That's right, there aren't. But perhaps there will be. What do you mean, Christine? Dr. Azevedo, are you going back to Tamiqui City today? Yes, I must get back by the seven. May I go with you? Yes, of course. Mr. President, I said, we don't need to produce our own silicon or make solar panels. We just sell the sun. Excellent. Mr. President, I said, if you go ahead with this project, Pansil would put a stop to it. They will stop Tanaku from selling its extra silicon. Great. 
What? Pantsuit. You didn't actually say pantsuit. Why not? That's what you said. No, no, it wasn't. I didn't say Panzo. I said other silicon manufacturers. I named no names. But you work for Panzo? Yes, as an agent. But if they find out that I said, that you said. What's the matter? What are you worrying about? Everything is fine. We'll put a stop to the big development project and Pansil gets the core sun. Cheers. Cheers. What I have to say is strictly off the record. No one must know about this conversation. Okay. Whoever bids for this contract must be able to guarantee a market for the extra silicon which Tanaku will produce each year. Guarantee a market? It's important for political reasons. Your company can't give such a guarantee on its own, can it? No way. We're only going to make a bid for the silicon plant. That won't be enough. You must form a consortium. Find another company to build a power station and a coking plant. Then you need another company which manufactures silicon products. Solar cells, microcircuits and so on. They will have to help Tanaku build a factory to make solar panels and also buy the silicon which Tanaku wants to sell. Wow. Anything else? No. And if we do all this, do we get the contract? I can't possibly promise that. But you must do it anyway. Otherwise, Tanaku will sell the sand to Pansel. I see. Well, at least I can try. Good. First, you have to find a firm which can build a solar panel factory and use the other silicon. Now, I happen to know a firm. meeting to discuss the uh, Tanaku Silicon project. I've asked David Rose to join us, sir. Good morning, David. Uh, I guess you've read his report? Yes, we were just talking about it. Well, as you know, then, David recommends that we uh, form a consortium and make a turnkey bid for the contract. Now, I don't like working with other companies if we can avoid it. But I want to know what you think. The uh, Tanaku government will only consider a turnkey bid, right? The government of Tanaku will consider either turnkey or package bids. But I'm sure that only a turnkey bid has any real chance of success. So it's uh, quite a simple matter, isn't it? Either we want this contract or we don't. Right. And we want it, don't we? Yes, sure do. I propose we approach suitable companies to form a consortium. Can I second that? If that's the way to get the contract, let's do it that way. Okay, I'll go along with it. David, give us a quick summary of what's involved. Right. Well, just to remind you of the details, gentlemen. Faulkner Enterprises will be able to bid for the silicon processing plant at Yatu Beach. We have to find another company to build a coal-fired power station and a coking plant on the west coast near uh, Tanaku City. And another to equip the solar module factory. Of course, we have to agree with these uh, companies on a firm of civil engineers. They will design the buildings and the new town at Yatu Beach. From the report, Harry, I see we also need a partner who can guarantee a market for Tanico's extra silicon. You know of a suitable company in Germany, don't you, David? Right. It would be easier to bring them into the consortium if we also had a German company to build the power station. Now, hold on a minute, David. We can get a better deal from an American company, can't we? Not necessarily, Bob. 
In this case, there's a German company that wants business in the U.S. market. We help them, and in return, they come into the consortium on our terms. Okay. Tell us something about them. Well, they're called EAU. They've been uh, building power stations and making power generating equipment for years. First, grooves are cut into the rotor disc. These grooves will hold the blades, which at their ends will be moving at supersonic speed. After heating in a furnace to about 350 degrees centigrade, the rotor discs are placed on the shaft, to which they shrink tightly on cooling. This rotor, when finally assembled, will be 11 and a half meters long and will weigh about 180 metric tons. Every rotor is tested in the test bunker at 25% more than its operating speed. And in operation, the centrifugal force on the longest blades will be about 350 metric tons. When at last the completed unit goes on power, 1,300 megawatts are produced from a single shaft. Music in the ears of the power station builder. But what of the men behind the machines? <laughs> we don't need to see any more. Where do their thoughts turn? Well, that was very impressive, Dr. Lehner. Thank you for showing it to me. If EAU and Faulkner Enterprises are going to work on the Tanaku project together, Mr. Rose, you must be satisfied that we can uh, deliver the goods. Oh, I'm sure you can. My directors are very interested in your proposal to form a consortium. Good. They've authorized me to discuss the details of a contract between us. Yes, so have mine. Uh, but before we do that, there is another matter we have to talk about. Oh? Well, the reason why we have come to you is not only for the high quality of your product. Well, the fact is we need your help. We want to persuade another company to join the consortium. Another company? Which one? Micro. And may I ask why Micro especially? Well, they've worked with you a lot, I believe. And they made electronic equipment, including microprocessors, for a long time. Now, the last I heard, they were moving into the manufacture of solar panels. Am I right? That's right. They moved into that field some time ago. We want Micro to give Tanaku the know-how so that they can set up their own solar panel factory. Indeed. And if Michael does that, what does Michael get in return? Michael is going to need more and more silicon, and Tanaku can guarantee that they will get it. I see. It works both ways. Tanaku guarantees to sell to Michael, and Michael guarantees a market for Tanaku. As a matter of fact, that part of it is necessary for political reasons. Uh, I understand now, Mr. Rose, but I can't speak for Micro. You will have to go to them. Yes, of course. But since your firm wants to build the power station, and since you've already worked with Micro... Oh, you want us to approach Micro together, do you? I had thought of that. So for you, it's EAU and Micro? Otherwise, neither EAU nor Micro? Well, yes. That is the situation. Engel. Carl Engel. Yes, Carl Engel of Micro. He is the man to approach. We at Micro think that by the year 2000, more than 1% of all energy used throughout the world will come from solar cells. How much is 1% of the world's energy demand, Dr. Engel? By the year 2000, uh, perhaps 200,000 megawatts. 200,000 megawatts from solar cells? All around the world, yes. Now you understand why we have gone into production. And we are expanding quickly every year. Well, in that case, you will need a guaranteed supply of high-quality silicon. Why, yes. And Tanaku will be able to supply it, especially if you, in advance, guarantee to buy it. Guarantee a market for Tanaku? That's a different matter. Well, it's either that or... <coughs> this is a matter which needs a lot of thought. Uh, perhaps we can discuss it later. Later. That's a good idea. Uh, but now, Mr. Rose, I would like to show you this. 
This is one solar cell. It produces one watt of electrical power, enough to make it rotate. See? Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, that's great. That's really good. May I try that? Please do. Thank you. It works in any kind of light. I'll show you. You see? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's great. Now, this is one of your silicon wafers, Mr. Rose. We treat it so that when light falls on it, some of the layers become positive, some negative. An electric current flows between the positive and negative layers. And these wires on the cell pick up the current. But it only produces one watt of electricity, right? But that's right. So we wire several cells together to form a panel. A module of your American cell, like this. A small electronic device controls the output. There are 36 cells in this panel. That means you get about 36 watts from one panel. So you would need uh, a million or two million panels for one power station, don't you? <laughs> you need not worry, Dr. Lehner. Solar panels will not replace your power stations. But they're useful where you need small quantities of electricity. Mm. Especially when it's a long way from the usual transmission line. Right. Of course, as the panels become less expensive, people will use them more and more. Well, in that case, I guess you'll be needing a lot more silicon. I'm afraid we'll have to postpone your appointment with Dr. Azevedo. But it's very important. Mr. Watanabe of Panzer is arriving from Tokyo today, especially to see him. Well, Dr. Azevedo has to see the president at 2 o'clock. When will he be free? He can see you and Mr. Watanabe at 4 o'clock, if that's convenient. Uh, yes, all right, 4 o'clock then. Goodbye. Damn. Yes, Mr. Ferguson? Oh, nothing. Mr. Watanabe's plane arrives in 20 minutes. I know that. I'm leaving for the airport now. Hi. Hi, Wakarimashita. Thank you for the use of your telephone. Not at all. It's a great pleasure to see you back in Tanaku, Mr. Watanabe. Thank you. You've been very successful. Well, I've always done my best to promote Pansil and its product. You did particularly well with the contract for the telephone exchange. And now this is Silicon Project. Thank you, Mrs. Chima. Mr. Ferguson, I'm rather worried. Worried? Yes. Someone is spreading rumors about Pansel and the project. Well, I haven't heard any rumors. At the electronics fair in New York, I heard that Pansil was going to try to prevent the government of Tanaku from producing its own silicon. No, surely not. Unfortunately, yes. I need hardly say, Mr. Ferguson, that the rumor is entirely untrue. Of course, it's ridiculous. It is true that at first Pansil wanted to buy the quartz sand. But we understand why Tanaku wishes to produce its own silicon. And we will not try to prevent them from selling any extra silicon they produce. Now, I would like you to find out if anyone in Tanaku has been responsible for the rumor. Mr. Watanabe, I can assure you I will do my best to find out. Good. You see, Mr. Ferguson, a rumor like this reflects on the honor of my company and therefore on myself. Don't worry, Mr. Watanabe. This project is too important for both of us to let such a thing happen. I'm glad you understand. Now. Let's talk about our meeting with Dr. Acevedo. You don't mind walking to the restaurant, do you? Not at all. It's nice of you to invite me to lunch, James.
Well, I think we need to know each other better, don't you? Oh, certainly. Besides, I still need your advice about the silicon process. Ah. I understand that David Rose is in Germany. He was talking about forming a consortium. That's good, isn't it? Oh, very good for our client. Now Faulkner will be able to compete with Pansil. Rose obviously heard about the political complications. Yes, at least he did. As a matter of fact, I told him. You what? I wanted Faulkner to be able to compete with Pansil. But you can't pass information to one company which is bidding against another. But I can, James. I did it. So you talked to Rose? Yes. You were meeting him in secret? I met him in secret once, yes. May I ask what your relationship is with that man? I have no relationship, as you put it, with David Rose. And I don't think you have any right to ask that question. Then why were you meeting him? And I don't like you casting doubts on my professional integrity. But, Christine, you must realise... My realize... only concern is to do as much as I can for Tanaku. And frankly, James, I don't think having lunch together is going to help a great deal. 